Tim Hogan, welcome to the Pre-Construction Podcast. Hey, good morning, Gareth. Thanks for having me. Thank you for reaching out. I know you've been listening to some of the episodes recently and you're a big fan. So thank you for your contribution listening. And again, coming on as well is, is exactly what we need. Young, high-performing pre-construction professionals going to tell their story. Excited. Yep. Good man. Right, Tim. So for anybody that doesn't know you, give us a quick uh, background check. Where, where are you at and what are you doing right now? Yeah. So I've I've been in the industry about 10 years. Uh, I graduated uh, from Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston. Uh, you know, when I got out of school, the economy was still recovering from the financial crisis in 2008. So, you know, there weren't as many jobs at the big contractors. So I wanted to try to ex expand my horizon, so to speak, on, on geographically where I was going to go. So I interviewed at Structure Tone uh, for the D.C. office. And, uh, you know, I, it seemed like a great opportunity. So I graduated end of August and started September 1st. So I kind of uh, just jumped right into it and uh, started with the P.E. rotation there, got my estimating experience. And I remember... When I when I moved from estimating into operations, I remember saying to myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to to jump into operations, be a project manager, be done with estimating. And I find that ironic for how my career has played out. Um, but got some great experience there. Uh, you know, seeing things from you know, I had experience obviously as a PE, but then as an assistant super and assistant project manager, which you know helped springboard me into the next role that I had. Uh, I ended up at Harvey Cleary as a project manager. Uh, which was great experience. Um, you know, I had seen successes and failures on on both sides at that point. Then, from the from the estimating and operation side, now I was running my own projects, which was great for building relationships with subs, architects, and, and clients. Um, and then, you know, I, I had been reached out to on LinkedIn by the guy that used to run Precon at Hit, uh, and we just we had dinner one night, and I ended up you know taking an offer on the spot, which really ended up being the best thing that could have happened to me in my career. Um, I came in and out as as a pre construction manager. You work my way up the senior pre-con manager, and now uh, I'm a pre-con pre-construction executive, uh, overseeing our commercial team within pre-con. So Hitch pre-con team is about 35 full-time staff members. Um, I oversee the commercial side, which is about 15 team members, They're primarily focused on multifamily, but commercial office, healthcare, hospitality, government, etc. So it's it's been a it's been a great run so far. So far, <laughs> you're only a kid. Too. <laughs> Merciful God. <laughs> Uh, 33 years of old, folks, and this man is absolutely killing it in pre-con for a huge company. And I mean, to manage 13 people already, I mean, that's that's unbelievable. But I want to take you back because Boston, uh, Wentworth, good, good, good university. Talk to me about the deg degree um, because we're all, I'm always piping on this this podcast about the, the lack of the lack of pre-construction and estimating modules within degrees. What was it like at Wentworth? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so I ended up going to uh, Wentworth as an architecture major. Uh, cool. I thought that's what I wanted to do. And I, you know, being a 18 year old, didn't really know too much about any industry, really. But I thought that architecture was for me and found out quickly that it wasn't. And I, I have a ton of respect for architects and the, all the work they put in, but it's just not for me. So I had a, you know, my best friend now was, was a construction management major. And he convinced me to join that, uh, to, to, to take a run at that. And that ended up being a great decision. Um, it's, a, it's an engineering, architecture, construction management focused school. Um, you know, it's a smaller school, but it's got a great rep reputation in the construction industry. Uh, but I think what I value most about it is uh, they have the co-op program, which is, you know, the paid internships. You're supposed to take two, uh, you know, a semester and a semester before you graduate. So, you know, instead of graduating in the spring, I graduate in the summer. But, I, you know, the idea is you have a job lined up when you when you leave. And I think that I, I really invaluable experience that I got being an intern before I you know, stepped my foot into the construction industry. So great experience, great school, um, and a lot of pride in that. Good. D delighted. And was there much estimating and pre-construction? Was there a focus on that or was it all construction management? No, I, honestly, no. And uh, that that's something that I, I wish and, and hope and assume that it's probably evolved in the, in the years yeah. since I've left. But we had, you know, we had an estimating and an advanced estimating class. And, you know, it really wasn't it really wasn't what estimating is. It was kind of taking, it was just doing quantities and, and, you know, uh, and putting unit prices and stuff, which is, which is great. That's a function of what an estimator or a pre-construction manager does, but it was pretty, uh, pretty basic compared to, you know, the, the construction operations type classes. So, you know, that definitely sets the trend of people wanting to be a project manager rather than pre-construction manager. Right so up. not a lot of estimating, but um, we've got some exposure. Yeah. A nice, a nice little taster. But as you say, that's probably evolved now in the VDC BIM model. Absolutely. 
Yeah, brilliant. Love it. That's good. I mean, because some of the other guys that, that, across the US, guys and gals that, that we interviewed, there, there was no module within estimate. And there wasn't even a little sprinkle on top. It was all construction management. I think that's where we've got to, we've got to change. We, 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 we Listen, it's great to get people in within the industry, but I think we're missing out on too much talent. Um, Brilliant. So you've gone through that. You, as you say, you have went to work. Harry Cleary was the first thing. And you just mentioned there, you were thrown into lead projects. And even when you were there, I mean, 2015, 2016, you're still relatively green, but yet you've given the responsibility and very similar to, to that at Hit Now, you're given the responsibility to lead. Where do you think that those leadership qualities come from? And, and, and how did you kind of, how did you say, yeah, you know what? Because a lot of people will say, whoa, 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 I'm, I'm not ready to lead here yet. Uh, yeah. I, I need to understand this a little bit more. I need a little bit, bit more experience. But it seems like, A, the people that were looking after you thought you were ready. And obviously yourself, you, you were like, yeah, hit me with it. Yeah, I, you know, I would credit that I had at both Structure Tony and Harvey Clear, I had some great mentors. Um, and, I, you know, being good mentors in the sense of you're not going to be coddled, but you're going to be, you know, sink or swim. You've got this and, you know, so, a sounding board to vent to. You know, you're not going to, as a, you know, an early 20s of uh, position, entry level position, you're not going to be put in a position to sink the company, obviously. So, you know, you can make mistakes and learn from them. And I think, you know, me personally, just having the the desire to want to move up, you know, you got to, you can't, you can't wait. You got to just jump in and take every opportunity and, and make it, make it count. So I think, um, you know, it, it was definitely challenging. I had a lot of late nights, a lot of weekends, uh, but you know, absolutely worth it. If you want to grow in any industry, I can, I can only speak for construction because that's all I've been in, but you know, you got to have the resolve to, to fight through the, you know, the adversity of the mistakes that you're going to make being green. Um, and, and, but again, having really good mentors to kind of show you the way is, is critically important. Brilliant. Love that advice. And I think people, and we've talked about it before, but people struggle to, 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 to understand the fact that you're not only joining a company, but you're joining a mentor or a manager or someone that you're going to work closely with. I think people get caught up in this company and e &R top and all this nonsense. Yeah, yeah. It's really the person that's going to be looking after you. It's a person that's going to be mentoring you. It's a person you're going to be directly reporting to, speaking to every day for the next five, 10 years. Um, I think that to me is one of the most important things. But coming back to, to the responsibility side, it, sh it tells me that your characteristic and your personality is like, yeah, I, I, let, let's go. Let's, there's, there's nothing that phases you. And I think going to hit, like you just described, the guy saying, let's meet up for a coffee. You taking the, 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 the offer on the spot and over lunch. I mean, it, you're just throwing yourself at stuff and, and, and seeing what's yeah. going out there. It's brilliant. Yeah. And, and, you know, at, at the time you're kind of like, what am I doing? Uh, but, you know, it's, I, I think you have to have the big picture understanding of, you know, this is a really good opportunity and, and hit, I'm in the DC market, you know, hit contracting, you know, is one of the top three that you want to be at. So when they come calling, you want to, you know, you want to, you're interested. And I, I wasn't even in pre-construction at the time. I was a project manager, but my understanding was it was kind of a, and, and what it truly is, in my opinion, a pre-construction manager is a project manager before the job mobilizes. Yeah. So you still get that exposure, but, you know, I'm working on, massive projects now for high profile clients and it's you know it was it was a terrific opportunity and i'm just glad i did it brilliant so you've you, you did a little bit of estimating back in a co-op or just in your er, early stage not much but now you're in a huge general contractor you've been thrown into the pre-construction site talk to us about the first three four five six months uh because you've come from the dark, dark side the penny has dropped this is the most important part of the project um yeah. how was that transition it was interesting. I, you know, I was fortunate. My background, uh, as you know, at the companies before, was a lot of high-end commercial interiors, law firm spaces. And my first project that I led was a big high-end interior. Uh, it was a bit uh, built the suit building, but it was very high-end interiors. And I was really tasked with really make, making sure that I understood that and we had good price on that. So, ton of coordination, ton of communication, because we had a team of I think ten people. And all of my experience prior to that in precon, I had bid my own projects, but it was me bidding it. And you're not part of a team of 10. And there's a lot to be said for, you know, coordination among not only with your subcontractors, but with your team and leading your team. Um, so I, I think, I, you know, I was fortunate to be on a project that was there was a work type that was similar to what I was used to to kind of get my feet wet. But there was a lot of sophistication that I learned, you know, over those months and really over the last six years of, you know, how to organize your data, how to communicate with a client, how to, you know, make sure you, you pave the way for your team to be successful. And I, I think it was definitely a, a um, shock at first, as far as, you know, you're going to have growing pains and you're going to be uncomfortable, but it's, in my opinion, if you're uncomfortable, that, that means you're growing. So 
Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Brilliant. And then it's, it's there's something said then, pre-construction manager, growing then from a senior pre-construction manager, senior pre-construction manager, and now a pre-construction executive running th- a team of 13 across all commercial construction. Um, where do you pick up the leadership skills to be able to do that? Is that, again, similar thing, throwing yourself in there and learning as you go? Or, or did you pick up from all your other experience prior to that and obviously mentors as well? Yeah, I think it's a hybrid of all that. I think, um, you know, just going through it yourself, you know, you know what your team is going through because you've done it and and having the humility and being humble and saying, you know, I'm not above doing a takeoff. So if someone's struggling, you know, that's not really my job anymore, but I'll do it if we have to, if, the div- if duty calls. And I think you gain respect for your peers that way in your team, but also having, you know, good mentors. I mean, the leader of our group uh, is, you know, an incredible leader and and kind of has enforced that with all of us and given us tips along the way. So shout out to our VP, uh, Gail Susan at hit, but he, he's, you know, he's been a, a great force for all of us to kind of to come together as a team, but it, it's helped me as a leader of my team to kind of you know make sure everybody's on the track for success. So brilliant. And again, we, we, it comes back to the manager that, as you say, the leader of the group, if they've got the right mindset, the development mindset, the growing mindset, then everyone underneath them will grow, grow with them. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and, and, we talked about one of the things that you like and, and you're passionate about is is technology. Um, tell us the story about technology because I think there was a there was a major shift within hit during your time from Excel to to a software and estimating software. Talk us through that. Yeah. So when I started at Hit and then really my entire career before, we were Excel based, and I I can speak for most people in saying I love Excel. Uh, Excel is great, but there is there's certainly the the human error aspect to it, and there's the tedious data entry linking things where you just it's a time suck and you know really what what i want our pre-construction our pre-con managers here and myself to focus on is truly the 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 finer points of our job which is understanding the data understanding the scopes you know communicating that with everybody rather than linking spreadsheets and and data entry And, and we so we migrated the destiny estimator about two years ago is when we started really working with it and I, you know, it's just, it's such a, it's such a shift in, in our productivity. I, I feel like we can just really get a hold of our data so much better, which makes us more efficient. Um, we use that. Uh, I mean, you can break out a job a million different ways. So, and I think uh, on a, on one of your um, podcasts earlier in the year, uh, one of your guests was talking about the same thing where there's so much linking in Excel and, and, you know, you breaking something down could take you days where, you know, you could do that in Excel by setting a couple parameters, you can do it in an hour. So um, it's just, again, you're only as good as the person behind the computer. Like there's in, until robots take over, you know, people's jobs, you know, there's you, you're only going to be as good as your the pre-con manager doing the work, but it just takes the busy work out of it. Yeah, so. absolutely. And and listen, that's what they're here for. We, we all understand that the amount of backlog that we've got within construction, every GC is the same. It's all about getting the right people with the right technology and being able to increase your capacity of that. Yeah. Um, and where do you think it's come? You mentioned there the data. The data is obviously the most one of the most important things within within construction. Is there anything else that it's really helped you with? Because I think Destiny, it's like any software. I mean, recruitment software that we use, We I find that we only use maybe 15, 20% of its capability. Is yep. there anything else? And, and and by the way, every company is different because it, it, it nobody can use it all because everyone has got nuances of how they run through estimating, how they run through pre-construction. Um, is there any yep. other part of it that you say, you know what, that's been a real game changer? So I, I will say that I'm super excited about what's what we're going to get from Destiny in the coming years. I, I would say that we really haven't scratched the surface with some of the really higher end things that, that you can do with it. For example, Power BI, again, that goes back to data. But just being just I think the the the, the fact that it just cuts out so much of the monotonous work um, and keeps you so organized and everybody, you know, everybody, the entire company, we have several thousand people that hit if you do a budget in Destiny, it's centralized in that location rather than, you know, uh, every department's got their folder and then they've got their own file structure. You got to find something that someone did three years ago. You're never going to find it. Now it's, you know, type in a keyword, you'll find the project. And it's just, I, I think data collection uh, and efficiency uh, is what any software, I think Destiny is a great example. And I know there are others out there that do similar things, but just making the company more effective, especially as a company that's really trying to grow nationally, you got to have those efficiencies in place. Absolutely. And I mean, a team of 13 as well. I mean, you got to be working the same way within the same workflows, the same processes and within with the same data. Love it. Absolutely. 
You mentioned there Power BI. Um, Visualization is a big thing as well. Um, is there anything out there that you guys use or that you're, you're seeing coming down the line? You go, you know what? Because we're, we all turn up at clients and you go, yeah, and you can talk the talk, but actually seeing it in front of you and, and yeah. seeing it come to light, it, it's so important. Um, what are you guys using and what are you looking forward to using in the future? Yeah, we we have uh, a virtual construction team at HIT that we are starting to integrate more with our pre-con team over the next year. And that's kind of an initiative for us, kind of having a virtual integrator that kind of connects the two. Um, and, and I think that is a huge value add for a client to be able to say, you know, like a 40 schedule and say that this is what your job's going to look like, you know, time lapse, you know, the job's not built yet, but here's what your job's going to look like as it gets built. Here are our constraints, here are our critical path items. Um, so I, I think, you know, 3D modeling is going to be something that we really get into this year. Uh, and then also Power BI and just being able to, you know, being able to enter in a couple parameters and be able to spit out a cost model um, is just, that's a game changer, honestly, uh, and being able to do it in the amount of time that it would take you with Power BI. So, Brilliant. Guy. And you know what I'm seeing as well, Tim? I'm seeing a, quite a lot of companies actually hiring data engineers. They're calling them pre-construction data engineers. Do you see it evolving as, as big as that, where you've got a, a, a I don't want to say a systems engineer, but a, a data entry, data management person and that's their full focus is keeping it updated keeping it organized making sure that you're getting the right data points yeah absolutely i think um you know we don't have a we, we i have heard of that data managers being within precon and i think as a, uh, uh technology creates efficiencies for our team i think that could be a function of a pre-construction manager's job and i think the more data we have we probably will need specific roles for people i think you know i, I think a virtual integrator uh, is something that we're trying to, is a great idea for anybody to develop. And I think we're working on that, but also a data manager, but making those functions of a pre-con manager's job just means that we've gained, we've got gained so much efficiency that we have the time to do that now. Uh, and, and, you know, what, whether it be, whether you're getting your cost data from RS means or whether you're doing it manually yourself from your conversations with subs, it's got to be organized somewhere. Uh, and if, if we're, if we're spending too much time just messing around in Excel, you're never going to get it done. So um, I, I think it's, I think it'd be great positions to add, but I think it'd be great just abilities to, to weave into the job function of a pre-construction manager. Love it. I can see the same thing happening. No doubt about it. And it gives the pre-con managers do the high, the high level, high touch stuff as well with the client side of things. Um, yeah. so tell me, Tim, what, uh, we're through 2022, what is 2023 looking, look, looking like for, for yourselves? Um, what's the plan? What are you most looking forward to? Yeah, well, I mean, we uh, we've been incredibly busy, and I think I see that continuing. I think um, you know our our focus for the last couple of years has been multifamily, and I think that you know we we put a lot of jobs uh, in a mobilization last year, and I think we have a plan to do that this year as well. Um, obviously, I think it goes without saying we had a crazy year last year with escalation, so it's it's getting those you know kind of back on track. I don't know if we're ever going to go back to where we were pre-pandemic, but um, I think it's a great outlook, and I think you know whether it's multifamily, I think we're you know healthcare, um, government. But I think also something that you know I'm very interested in, and I, I think our company is as well, is, is the potential for design build. And I think that's really what, that's essentially what what precon's most value add for a project would be, where we own the design, and you know you have a pre-construction manager that's your kind of design integrator, um, and making sure that you're keeping this job on track for the for the number that you had at a at a program stage, getting it successful. And we we've done them in the past. Uh, that you know the biggest project that I ever worked on was. Uh, uh, NGA West out in St. Louis was a design build with JV with McCarthy. Um, and that's, you know, it was several years of, of pre-construction and design as a project that we're going to be putting in place. So that's, that's, you know, I think another thing that just kind of another layer of what we're looking for within pre-con. Brilliant. Love it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. The knowledge that a general contractor has when it comes to design. I mean, most that, that don't do design build, it's just knowledge wasted. Um, yeah. There's so much information there, lessons learned. And and how do you see that working? Would you see um, you just partnering up with an architect or maybe getting a couple of architects in-house? Um, what would the ideal kind of structure look like? I think you can do it either way. I think on our job, uh, the, the NGA West project out in St. Louis, it was such a massive project. Uh, we we partnered up with you know two of the, be the best design firms in the country, frankly. That's uh, Gensler and Black and & Beach. And they had the horsepower to... To, to staff up because you, you know it's not like you have one architect and one you know MEP engineer. We had we had teams from Baltimore, DC, Houston, Dallas, I think New York, you know, and then you know, Kansas City, and then we had you know hit hit contracting in DC, McCarthy out in St. Louis, just a massive team. So depending on the size of the job, I, I think it definitely makes sense to partner with a design firm. But maybe the smaller jobs, maybe we 
maybe we do have that down the road in-house design team. Um, but I think it could go either way. But e either way, I think it's important for any pre-con manager going into a design build to understand that the design team is a partner. Um, you know, we might technically oversee the design, but uh, it's, you know, we need them just as much as they need us. So. Big time. I love it. And and design build, I see it's becoming more and more popular. I mean, the days of hard bid are slowly but surely dwindling away. Um, and whether it's negotiated, CM at risk, um, design bid build, design build, it's the it's just reducing the risk for the contractor. And essentially that's what you want. I mean, too long for too long in this industry, we have just been taking on the contractor's been taking on too much risk. Um and funny, getting your taste, getting your your, your feet, your your teeth into that job, the design build job. Um what did you see the biggest advantage was it? I mean, obviously control on the pre-con side and, and longer on the pre-con side, did, did that allow you to just build a, a bigger, better quality project? Yeah, I think it really just, it, if, if nothing else, it challenges anybody that's on that, on that pre-con team to be a better pre-con manager because, you know, you have skin in the game at such an early stage. So, you know, for, for me, I, I love when our team gets involved at the earliest stage programming. Like I, I, I like when we put together a cost model without even seeing a drawing, like a, a, a developer, multi, I can speak for multifamily on this, but a developer knows how many square feet they want, how many units they want, and we can put together a cost model based on that. And we'll work with the design team from there. Design build, we give them that cost model, but we're signing a contract on that value. So you really, you know, you can't just like throw a number out there and hope it makes sense at later, in, you know, later in the project, you have real liability. So uh, it's, it's constant cost modeling, it's constant budgeting, it's constant communication, and it's, you're, you be, and I, I can say personally from experience, it just makes you a better professional, makes you a better pre-con person when you get through one of those. Love it. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. And then when you marry that, especially internal with the right technology, it just becomes, It I think it becomes more of an enjoyable, I speak to project manager, pre-con pre -con manager all the time, it becomes a more enjoyable journey rather than constant pressure because you know yourself, we're getting we're getting beat up constantly. I mean, 2022, any pre-con manager came out of 2022 with less gray hairs is is, is yeah. it doesn't happen um so it, it it has to happen in the future absolutely absolutely i i yeah i agree technology is going to be you know the companies that take advantage of the, te of the technology are the companies that are going to be successful down the road yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Tim, there's no doubt about it. 33 years of age, pre-con exec, running 13 people. It's an amazing journey. I want now just one final question. What would you give, uh, you were back in Wentworth, what sort of advice would you give someone that is just graduating right now and just doesn't doesn't really know, and, and to be honest with you, and this is another thing that, that I've I've found, that they don't even have to be con uh, uh, studying construction. They can be study, studying IT, but they're maybe not sold on IT. Um, what would you say to them about construction right now, how enjoyable it is, the, the evolution of the pre-con department? Yeah, I, I would say that there is always going to be a need for construction of some kind. And, the, you know, the markets change and what what construction work type is hot at, at different times. But there's always a need for it. It's always an industry where you're going to grow. Um, and I think, uh, you know, putting yourself out there and, and understanding that pre-construction is is just as good as, as being a project manager or a superintendent there, there are some people that may just want to spend their time on a job site, you know, and, and if you want to go that route, I mean, that's, that's also a great way to go. Um, you know, obviously pre-construction is more on the office side, but um, I like to think of it as, is just as much kind of forward facing and, and, and sales and, and trying to bring in work as it is quantifying the work and putting out a number. So, um, you, you know, you're not going to be someone that sits in a back office and just kind of waits for direction. You, you can, you know, I, I like to say with our team, when we start a project, pre-con drives the bus. Um, and I think that that's, that's something that's, you know, good to live by. I want to make sure that people coming out of college, because I thought this, the pre-con was kind of a back of house function and it's really not. Um, so there's, there's tons of opportunities to grow. And it's, again, with technology, there's, there's more and more job opportunities and, and avenues for growth by, by the day. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's evolving. It's only going to change. I mean, BIM, VDC, I mean, we, we've got Destiny, obviously, and there's there's probably multiple other options, but the, the likes of pre-construction technology now that are coming up, the, the, the 360 platform, it's coming as well. And it's it's exciting times, I have to say. So if you were to get in now and you did have that mindset, and listen, the education system is set up to get project managers and superintendents. I don't think that needs to change, but the other side of it needs to change within high school, within before they even pick their degrees give them an exposure and an idea of what pre-construction looks like, how important it is, how much, how many hats you can use, what sort of technology you can use, the importance of it. Um, and that's essentially where the podcast exists. Yeah, no, I definitely appreciate uh, shining a light on our side of the industry. So that's great. Ken, you've been an absolute legend. Thank you very much. Looking forward to following your career.
Yeah, likewise. Good talking to you.